Hey everyone, it's Tim here. This is Urban Dunia and today we are coming to you from Lahore for one last time because this is the final episode of this Lahore Explorer series. We are showing you Mall Road and I'm here again with Hamza. Oh my god, I'm so excited. This is the best part of Lahore. It's like uh, your favorite I, part of Lahore, is isn't it? It is my favorite yeah. part of Lahore. <laughs> so I had to bring you so along so for excited. this, obviously. <laughs> I'm so excited to show it and show it to the people as well. So. And we're starting here today in Bagha Jinnah, yes. which is basically the central park, you could say, of Lahore. Yes, again, and um, amongst the places in Mall Road and the whole Lahore, this is the best. And like, at least I think it's the best. It's my favorite part, and I'm so excited to show you. Let's go see. Just south of Old Lahore is the city's colonial heart, Mall Road. In today's vlog, we're exploring the road and the neighborhoods either side of it. The British named it the Mall and built it as a link to the local administrator's house. Now it's officially called Shahara Qaidazm, but everyone knows it as Mall Road. These gardens were originally called Lawrence Gardens and modeled on London's Kew Gardens, but they were renamed after Pakistan's founder after independence. Bagh Jinnah contains Lahore's Botanic Garden, the Qaidaism Library, cricket grounds and tennis courts, and is connected to Lahore Zoo. Across the road is Atchison College, an exclusive boys school, and the Governor's House of Punjab, both of which are closed to the general public. Further along is the Alhamra Art Center, which hosts theater and exhibitions throughout the year. A bit further along, and we've arrived at the administrative heart of Punjab, the Provincial Assembly and other government buildings. It's something of a nerve center for political statements, and it's not uncommon to see rallies being held here. Behind the Punjab Assembly is the historic Faletti's Hotel, opened in 1880 by an Italian businessman. This is also the beginning of the colonnaded edifices for which Mall Road is known. These buildings, most of which were built during the British occupation, now house fabric markets and shops that, before the construction of glitzy shopping malls, were among Lahore's finest retail offerings. Behind some of these buildings is a collection of busy markets where we're headed for lunch. You brought me to Kals Biryani. Or Kals Biryani? It's like the Punjabi Biryani. Punjabi Biryani. I've heard that that's a thing. I'm not going to get involved in that debate. <laughs> There are other places to head for lunch around here too, among them Cafe Portico, with views over the historic surroundings, and Cafe Euphoria, a long-standing favorite. Mall Road retains something of an old world charm. Newspaper stands on the roadside, street barbers plying their trade in the back streets. All along Mall Road, on either side, are these beautiful historic colonial era buildings. In fact, just walking down Mall Road is like a slice of history in the home. The first time I visited Lahore was in 2007 and I stayed at the Regal Ancient Indian and that's just down there actually, it's still there after all these years. All of this is listed here in my book in Pakistan Traveller, which is the world's most comprehensive travel guide book to Pakistan. There's a link in the description below so that you can get your copy today. Just off Mall Road is the Cathedral Church of Resurrection, dating back to 1877 and the seat of the Diocese of Lahore. So walking down Mall Road, I mean, this is basically the colonial heart of Lahore. And um, Hamza, you mentioned that there's actually like a story or poem yes. about, yes. about Mall Road, yeah? There's a very beautiful short story by Ulam Abbas. Um, he's actually like the Urdu short story writer. And um, in which there's like a character, the protagonist is like a government worker. He has this overcoat on and he's going through the shops, checking the Iranian carpets, which is kind of like a luxurious thing to check out in a shop when you go there. And he's going through all the shops that are like high-end stores uh, back then at that time. Um, and he looks at the shops, tries to pretend that he needs them or he's gonna buy them. But uh, all this time, uh, he just like goes to shops, talks to people and gains all that like, um, 
like validation for his persona that he has created after wearing a coat. He basically is um, saving up some money to bring, make a new coat. Uh, and he was crossing a street and uh, it's run down by a car, a lorry. And when uh, that happens, they take him to a hospital and they take off his coat and underneath it, there's like rags and worn down clothes. It's a commentary on people's pretentiousness and how it just kind of like promotes the pretentious well, materialism nature, in materialism in society. Yeah. And this was basically very, very true to the place as well, because at that time there was no development around the area. Uh, we have like a governor house, the Viceroy governor house at the end. And we had all the high end shops at on the small road back then and even like in the colonial times and post-colonial times as well it was like the hub of like so and that's why that, that story yeah. set on this road yes yeah. and it's beautiful i mean i sh i think everybody should like read it especially the ones who come to lahore that you'll be able to appreciate it more one of the joys of strolling Mall Road is stopping for snacks along the way, and the Hafiz Dahi Bhalli corner has been serving customers since 1960. It's just across the road from the Hafiz Juice corner, which is a Lahore institution. It's where we're basically washing down all of the biryani and the chaat. Um, this, I think everyone would know Hafiz Juice corner, right? Like if you said to anyone in Lahore, yeah, they would know it. Um, and what's great about it is that, well, not just that it's really good juice and centrally located, but you get your juice in a thing like this, but then your friend that you're sitting with, they give you a little bit of it, like a taster in the small cup next to that. So what flavor have you got? It's, um, like it's oh. cocktail. That's cocktail, okay. So it's a mixture. And, and this, this one? Is, uh, pomegranate, like pomegranate. Pomegranate. Two. Yeah. So I got the pomegranate one and I got a taster at the cocktail one. Now, Hafiz Juice Corner is the kind of place that locals in the hall would know about. Some visitors get here, but you really ought to get here. And that's why I have included it in Lahore Explorer, which is not just this vlog series, but it's also an ebook which I have created as an accompaniment to my book, Pakistan Traveler, and to this vlog series. You can get it in separate chapters, one for each different vlog that I've created different neighborhoods of Lahore, or you can get it all in one. You can download that by following the link in the description below. Down the side of Hafiz Juice is Old Anarkali Bazaar, the counterpart to New Anarkali just north of here. Across from the juice shop, every Sunday a book market opens up on a side street. And in the vicinity, you can also find the Lahore High Court building, which dates back to 1889, the GPO from 1887, and Old Tollington Market from 1864. And now into the sublime Lahore Museum, built in 1894. British author Rudyard Kipling set the first scene of his novel Kim in the forecourt of this grand museum, and his father, John Lockwood Kipling, was one of the museum's first curators. The museum today hosts a collection of archaeological artifacts dating back to Buddhist rule, and more modern pieces such as a collection of independent Pakistan's earliest stamps and banknotes. Just behind the museum is the small but historic Government of Punjab Public Library. Further along still, and in the area known as Lower Mall, stands Istanbul Chok with its tree of bird nesting boxes the prestigious National College of Art, the Lahore Town Hall, and the iconic Government College University, usually abbreviated to GCU. Founded in 1864, it now ranks among Pakistan's best regarded universities and every year hosts a Harry Potter festival inspired by the building's architecture. And if you were thinking that Mall Road is dominated by colonial heritage, know that just a few hundred meters down into Old Anarkali Bazaar is the mausoleum of Sufi Saint Moj Darya. And just beyond that, Lahore's Jain Mandir or Jain Temple. It's around here in the neighborhood of Mazang that you'll find a huge fresh fruit market. And in another neighborhood, the mausoleum of Anarkali, the alleged lover of Mughal Emperor Jahangir. Further out still is Chaburji, a four-towered monument that was once the centerpiece of a Mughal garden. 
It's commonly said that sometime between its construction in 1686 and the arrival of the British, the garden was washed away in a massive flood, and subsequent development left only the monument standing in the middle of a huge roundabout. And just near here is the Lahore PIA Planetarium, supported by Pakistan International Airlines, and which hosts a few space displays, as well as a retired PIA Boeing 720, which you can walk through. So walking around the museum has worked up an appetite. So now we've come down here to Kursi Halim, Karachi, Kursi Halim, I think it's called. Karachi, Halim. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is what we've been served. And I think Hamza can tell us a bit more about what's in here. Fried onions, we have um, lemon or lime, and then you have chaat masala, which is a signature like masala, all the spices ground together. Um, then we have chopped chili. Uh, mint and chopped garlic as well. Uh, uh, ginger. <laughs> ginger, yeah, I was gonna say it looks like ginger. But they do serve it with garlic as well, like fried garlic, but they okay. don't yeah. have it right here. Okay. And in the middle, oh, that's all the dead and ones. Okay, yeah. Just like squeeze it. And yeah, it. okay. And then here we've got salad. salad, naan, and what is actually halim exactly? It's like a stew, isn't it? Uh, it it's like basically a ground stew of lentils and grains like all of them uh, with chicken so it's kind of like a soup um, stew <laughs> okay it's, yeah um, cooked overnight as well like, uh, some like of the slow cooked some families yeah, yeah. it's cooked really well yeah. uh, so that the the fiber of the meat dissolves within the whole stew see how it's sort of gooey the way that it's been slow cooked overnight yeah That's really good. And I think maybe they've called it cozy because of how this makes them feel inside. <laughs> it's like comfort food. <laughs> there are lots of other options around here too, including this great kebab place and gogos on the main mall road, who serve up yummy club sandwiches with fries all night long, and were a favorite late night fast food run for years before burger and pizza chains turned up in Pakistan. We're now finishing off the night in possibly, I think, like the most traditional way on Mall Road, would you say? That's right, shaman ice cream. Um, would you say it's the best ice cream in Lahore? A lot of people believe so. Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, this particular flavor, the uh, um, pistachio, pistachio. Or pistachio and almond in there, yeah. isn't it? That is like, it really hits the spot. And I remember being brought here on my, by some friends on my first trip to Lahore back in 2007, and it hasn't changed. It's still just as good. good. So. We're gonna have this, and then after we finish this, we're gonna be heading over to Hall Road, which is like the technological hub of Lahore. Um, but for now, I think it's time to eat ice cream. And if you see, and I mean, I know that this shouldn't be that special, but often you get pistachio and almond flavors and they don't actually have the real stuff in there. There is a real flaked almond in there and real pistachio. It is really good. And really cold. Other dessert options include jalebis, fried dough doused in sugar syrup, a quintessentially Pakistani sweet. You'll find these in Old and Arkali too. And in winter months, these are served in a bowl of warm milk. Just next to Chaman Ice Cream is Hall Road, Lahore's biggest technology market, where you'll find everything from cell phones through to home sound systems. Further out, south of Mall Road, is Kartabachok, where Babaji Sharbatwala serves Lahore's favorite sharbat, a cordial or squash made from sandalwood or almond extract and ice cold water, which is heaven in the hot summer months. Also on Kartabachok is Mashallah Mazang Parata, which serves up several varieties of this oily breakfast staple. Further out still is Nafiz Kasuri Faluda, which serves faluda, a traditional dessert made from noodles, sweet cream, and ice cream and Jilani Park, almost an adjunct to Bagh Jinnah, where we started, but home to Lahore's polo ground. And finally, out in the suburbs, the shrine of the Saint Shah Jamal, the fourth of Lahore's guiding lights. Here, every Thursday night, devotees perform Damal, a rhythmic, trance-like devotional practice that has to be seen to be believed. But we're finishing up tonight at the Park Tea House, right in the center of Mall Road, which for many years was the preserve of poets, philosophers, progressives, and other thinkers and literary types. It was opened in 1940, 
fell into disrepair during the early 2000s, but was reopened in 2013 and has been a popular meeting place ever since. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode and for watching the Horror Explorer as more coming up next week. But for now, thank you so much to Hamza for uh, coming along and showing us around. Oh, thanks so much for, I, I love it, I loved it. And thanks for inviting me along the way. <laughs> it's been awesome and we'll be back in the hall very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Explore Pakistan and Lahore like a local with my books. Pakistan Traveller is the world's most comprehensive travel guidebook for Pakistan. And Lahore Explorer is the world's most comprehensive travel guidebook for Lahore. Pakistan Traveller comes as an ebook or paperback. And Lahore Explorer comes as an ebook. But you can get it in separate chapters or all together in one ebook. Get your copies today by clicking the link in the video description below. And that's not all, there is so much more to discover. Check out some of my other vlogs. And if you like what you see, make sure that you like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you can be part of my dunya.